Miami Vice takes you to a whole new level of... Obsession. The new action... Military madness. ...begins tomorrow. It's coming. Then on Crime Story, things were looking up. I'm gonna be a father. But Lucas Vendetta could destroy Torello. It goes down now! Miami Vice and Crime Story, tomorrow. You're on your way to work. You need to know what's happening. The important news. Good morning, Judge. You're on the WS Professional Wrestling with Dr. Jerry Graham and the great Wojo. 1370 AM Stereo. When you need to know. Mornings with Kirk and LaCava. Two guys getting the job done. On Toledo's first choice. WSPD. Everybody knows how to do that kick. Help kick. <laughs> yeah. Meet a very special blind and retarded piano genius tonight. Portions of the following live telecast have been pre recorded. Live from Hollywood, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson, the 24th anniversary. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen and the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Johnny and an all-new collection of favorite funny moments featuring Diane Cannon, Tim Conway, Billy Crystal, David Letterman, Matt Midler, Joe Piscopo, Sybil Shepard, Robin Williams, Judge Wapner. Person performances by comedians Jerry Seinfeld and Roseanne Barr. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny. Have you look, but, but take it easy. That is, that is not a shower curtain, and I'm not Bobby Ewing. <laughs> what a nice reception. We, we thank you for coming on our 24th anniversary, and uh, sorry, obviously, you, you folks forgot it said uh, black tie on the ticket. <laughs> Want to bring in the classy group? No. no. <laughs> this is uh, our 24th anniversary. We are in what they call on the networks prime time. Now, the show is for actually for you people who are too old for Punky Brewster, but not quite ready for the new Lucy show. So you're right in there somewhere. <laughs> and because we're on at an earlier hour, most of you tonight are probably watching me from your den or your living room. So it should be a little easier to hold your attention tonight. Competition in the bedroom is rough. Yeah. Uh, you might be happy to know we are burying tonight's show in a time capsule. And thousands of years from now, archaeologists will probably exhume it and try to figure it out. And of course, if they can't, Michael Jackson will be around to explain it to them. <laughs> you know? I sometimes wonder about Michael and his, his oxygen chamber. I, I don't think Michael has his seat back tray in the upright position. <laughs> anyway, we started in New York in 1962, which is the, one of the, probably the greatest city in the world. New York City. <clears throat> right? 
Because we have, New York has a pulse. Something goes on every minute there, most of it unsolved. <laughs> and now, now we come to you from the exciting community of Burbank, California. Doesn't have the, uh, the frantic activity that New York City has. For example, over in the uh, post office here, they have a photo in Burbank of a fugitive who's a serial jaywalker. <laughs> we throw in a mild one just once in a while. 24 years ago, we worked for RCA. Now, I work for General Electric. <laughs> Difference is now, when I go to a network vice president, he can fix my toaster. <laughs> now, I don't say this out of uh, any egotism, but since 1962, I probably discovered literally hundreds of comedians who are now hosting literally hundreds of their own talk shows. <laughs> now, now, it sounds uh, awful to say I'm famous. I am famous, but not for The Tonight Show. It's for putting three other people on the show Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> Twenty-four years. Yeah. Do you remember the first, first sure show? Sure do. In twenty-four years, do you know that I have probably said to Bob Hope eight hundred and sixty times, "Bob, you want to set up this clip with Brooke Shields?" <laughs> <laughs> Anniversary shows, let's be honest, are getting a little, I think, common in our business. Next week there's a special uh, they're doing where Vanna White <laughs> turns over her ten thousandth letter. <laughs> There's so many things that have happened, you can't think of them all, but in 1962, if you think about it, Geraldo Rivera was a little boy digging in a sandbox. <laughs> he found nothing then, he finds nothing now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. uh, television is a very easy uh, medium to pick on, and they're critics too. But I think it, television happens to be a great medium. What would we do without television? It'd be tough. Americans would have to learn to read. Oh. Can't have that. I see. <laughs> but television is a great communicator. It went from father knows best to Reagan knows better in only 25 <laughs> years. Now, there are a lot of to uh, talk shows on daytime. You know, there's a big brouhaha between uh, Phil Donahue yeah. and Oprah Winfrey, who just started her show. Now, I understand that Phil and Oprah have um, agreed to a, a swap of captured guests. Um, Phil is going to release unharmed Oprah's transvestite with a binge eating disorder <laughs> if, if Oprah will turn over Phil's compulsive shopper who claims she saw a UFO. So it should be a nice nap. <laughs> what else really happened? Did this, just some, I guess Zsa, Zsa getting married was a big event of this year. What was the eighth, eighth, eighth. time Zsa, Zsa got yeah. married? Zsa, Zsa is, a, is a lovely lady, but she has walked down more aisles than the taco vendor at Dodger Stadium. <laughs> You know, if we do this another 24 years, we'll be 85, we can go out and double date with George Burns. <laughs> there are a couple of silly items in the news I want to call to your attention. You may remember it last week. There was an incident at Disneyland concerning Minnie Mouse. It seems that some crazy guy went and fondled <laughs> Minnie Mouse, you know, which is an actual person dressed in a costume. And today at Disney World in Florida, a mother claims that Mickey Mouse roughed up her son because the, the kid apparently grabbed Mickey's tail. <laughs> it's getting wild. Uh, today, a couple of elderly tourists were mooned by Dopey. <laughs> One little, uh, what time I got? I want to, got another minute? Okay. I want to go too long because we've got a lot of great stuff to show you, but you may know that the Senate has approved increasing the speed limit nationally to 65 in rural areas. <laughs> Californians are against the new law because they're afraid if they have to slow down to 65, their cars are going to stall out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you 
Show me another state that drives 65 miles an hour through a salad bar. And <laughs> Anyway, I thank you for coming. We've got some marvelous people on the show, some, uh, some real funny uh, things I think you'll enjoy tonight. So don't go away. We're going to do a commercial, give you a chance to get into a tuxedo at home, and <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks very much. Brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. We're working together to be the best. When you're behind the wheel in the Baron GTS, it's nice to know GTS excelled in handling in a U.S. Auto Club test. Did 0 to 50 in 5.63 seconds. Triumphed in braking and gave BMW and Mercedes something they never expected. A driving lesson. GTS comes sensibly priced with Chrysler's protection plan. You don't drive the Baron GTS the way USAC did. But it's nice to know you could. Chrysler, driving to be the best. Introducing Wendy's new big classic hamburger. This is the good stuff. Can't get it in a Whopper. This is the good stuff. Can't get it in a McDLT. This is the good stuff. Wendy's new big classic. Fresh beef, fresh taste, big size. This is the one made right before you rise. This is the good stuff. Wendy's new big classic. Can't get enough, this is the good stuff. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much. Okay. Happy anniversary, Happy sir. anniversary. Here we go again. <laughs> um, now, tonight, uh, we're, we're going to show you some things that have happened the past year. Now, we've been on 24 years, and I don't know about you, but sometimes when we have this tremendous exposure, as a personality, you get a little self-importance mm. you know you think sure. you're you know you think you're really something yeah. then once in a while somebody comes on the show and puts the whole thing in perspective so you think you're a big star well one night we had a lady on called her name was Bertie McKay she's 103 years old and here's a way Bertie handled a really big star Hi, darling. How are you? I look at you every, every Sunday, every oh, Sunday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is Johnny. Oh, hello. Hi, Johnny. I'm up here, too, Bertie. You want to sit down? Because I'm home. Down. I'm in bed. Oh, isn't that I sweet? go to bed with the ducks, you know. Yeah, with the ducks? <laughs> yeah. How are you? May I call you Bertie? Yes, sure. How are you? And you have a... Oh, I love your program. Thank you. Plug 60 minutes. Yeah. No. Because I don't like it. Yeah. Bye-bye, <laughs> Bertie. <laughs> she goes to bed early. Yes, yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you, you have, uh, do you have a sister? Yes. My, my sister's going, she's dead. Oh, I'm, I'm sure she's dead. I had her cremated. <laughs> Okay, Bertie. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Is she wonderful? The oh. Wife. oh, I'm sure she's dead. <laughs> no. uh, Doc has been with the show since its inception. And I always talk about our band, which I think is the greatest uh, working band today any place. And he's one of the fine trumpet, one of the greatest trumpet players ever. And he can hit notes mm. that only small animals and <laughs> perhaps Michael J. Fox can hear. So. <laughs> One night I put him to the test. I wanted him to hit a mm. particular note and see how high he could go on the trumpet. And uh, this is the way it turned out. Whee! What was that? What was that? What was that last note you hit on? Was that it? What was that last note on the trumpet? Uh, high. That was a B flat concert. concert. High B flat concert. High and B it flat. hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the highest note you can hit on the trumpet? No, it depends on what happened the day before. <laughs> 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 
But that's a high note, high B flat, right? Yeah. You're getting in the danger zone with Try that. Do, do the high B flat again and then see, see if you can go above it. Do the high B flat and do then you sneak... have any idea? <laughs> No, I don't. What I know you're what asking me to do. <laughs> I know it. 23 know years, you've never asked me anything. Well, that takes, <laughs> that takes great embouchure, as they say, right? Let's hear it, Doc. Great embouchure. You, you want to uh, sneak up to the, uh, sneak, sneak on up. Well, uh, <laughs> can't, can't we have the whole band play? No, I don't want to cover over this. <laughs> I want to just clean. Silly person you are. <laughs> now, as you know, frankly, every well-known comedian has a, 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 a saying that identifies him immediately. Rodney Dangerfields, I don't get no respect. Uh, Steve Martin, for a long time, said, well, excuse me. Uh, well, what happens when that guy goes out in public? Everybody comes up to him and wants him to do his current expression. So we had Billy Crystal on the show one night, who also has a certain line as part of the language. And I was determined to be the one person in the whole country not to ask him to repeat it. Here's a very clever Billy Crystal. I did not do what everybody has been doing to you. Every time they see you any place, I held back and did not do that. You must be getting tired of that. Of? People saying, you look, you know what. Oh, I want you to say it. Everyone else has. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been, uh, it's been amazing to... Uh, you never know how these things How take do you off? explain? You know, it was just auto automatic, and a couple of times you did that, and it was like wildfire. It became a catchphrase. It know? was amazing. I was in a Chinese restaurant last night, and the major <laughs> did. Oh, you look marvelous! Oh. <laughs> oh, you are Mr. Chris, you are marvelous. You are better to work than to feel good. I was, uh, <laughs> it's so marvelous. <laughs> Backstage. Backstage, one of the stage hands. Hey, man, you be looking marvelous. Marvelous. <laughs> But you know, because I, I discovered uh, the Fernando character on the show. He was a frequent guest. Fernando right? Lamas is the, is the genesis for this character. Right. I'm not doing a Fernando Lamas imitation. But when he would come out on this show, mm -hmm. as you know very well, sure. he was one of the great guests on the mm -hmm. show. Because he'd sit. That Latin charm. Oh, and he would, he would control the, the crease in his pants before he would <laughs> he'd before he'd say anything. And he'd usually say hello to you first. Right. Yes. And he'd sit there, and I'd be sitting home just, I just loved him. Hello, Ed Dolly. Oh. You know, this whole salmon color shirt is marvelous. You look marvelous. <laughs> Hello, Fred. <laughs> Fred, I got it. You should always wear plaid. It's, it's like Kansas from the air. I tell you that right now. John. Hello, Doc. How are you, darling? What the hell happened to you with that? Did the Universal Tour throw up on you? What is that? <laughs> but, Doc, John. Yes. Yes, Fred. You haven't been in television for so many years. That's and true, Fred. You look. You know what I'm saying to you. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Doc. Yes. How do you hook up a VCR? <laughs> you watch something, you tape something else. I'm so crazy going us. I'm so confused. But John, from the bottom of my heart, deep inside my body, not Tammy Grimes. You clear me there. John. <laughs> to say it to the king, I told you, the silver fox sitting here, John, you look marvelous. Does he not look? You look mad. Funny guy. Now, when you're in the public eye, um, all of us get requests from time to time from civic organizations to uh, lend a hand or name to tape a commercial on their behalf. You've seen celebrities speaking for the uh, Red Cross, uh, Keep America Beautiful, Girl Scouts, and so on. And uh, I get approached from time to time to do some of these what they call public service announcements. Uh, we're going to show you one now and throughout the show tonight. You will see some more of these public service announcements, so they're very important, so watch carefully. The following is a public service announcement. Johnny Carson here. If you've been following the news, you know that Humphrey the humpback whale went the wrong way and was trapped in the Sacramento River for three long weeks. 
Because of this, the unlucky mammal will be too late for the mating season off the coast of Mexico. <laughs> this is an urgent plea. If you manage an aquatic theme park such as SeaWorld or Marineland, or if you just own a female whale in heat, <laughs> you can help Humphrey. Contact Tail for the Whale. You'll make a 40-ton fellow very happy. Legendary Mercedes-Benz SL Coupe Roadster. To every reason you ever had for wanting to drive it, you can now add one more. A mighty 5.6-liter light alloy V8 engine. 227 horsepower. Infinite driving excitement. The Mercedes-Benz 560 SL. Some folks have been eating the same old spaghetti sauce for so long, it's become unconscious. But now there's a Prego sauce that's helping them snap out of it. Fresh-tasting Prego al fresco. Al fresco is light in texture, lightly seasoned. So there's a fresh tomato taste, a natural tomato snap your whole family will love. Snap out of your old spaghetti sauce habit with Prego al fresco. Fresh homemade taste, it's in there. A lot of traffic here, 12 o'clock position. Could you check it out? Roger, going in for a closer look. Wow, I've never seen traffic like this. And they're all heading for Color Tile's big sale. Half-price ceramic floor tile. Half-price paint wall covering. 25% off oak parquet tile. Understand, Color Tile 1. See you there. Color Tile's big sale, now through Sunday. See you there. Johnson & Johnson celebrates a century of caring for families like yours with valuable coupons on your favorite brands in Sunday's paper, plus a chance to win in our $1 million giveaway. At your store's display, see details and coupons from Johnson & Johnson in Sunday's paper. When I was a kid, I loved to wear bandages just to get attention. But now, I wear new Band-Aid brand clear, so people notice me, not my bandage. New Band-Aid brand clear, only from Johnson & Johnson, clearly the best-looking bandage ever. Okay, as you know, every, uh, every network television show requires commercials to stay on. If this show didn't have a sponsor, I'd be back in Nebraska working as a tumbleweed crossing guard, I suppose. <laughs> so one night, we welcomed a new sponsor of The Tonight Show. And here is that sponsor. Hello, friends. Max Beta here for Video Mart. Now, for those of you who have thrilled to the piano artistry of the Wizard of the Keyboard, Richard Kleiderman, and listen spellbound to the magical song stylings of Slim Whitman, now comes a sight and sound sensation that will dazzle your senses. I'm talking about the Marcos family golden treasury of music. That's right. That's friends, Ferdinand and Imelda together singing about what else? Traveling. That's right. Anyone who's ever had to leave the country in a big hurry We'll appreciate this video cassette here, Songs for Splitting. <laughs> That's right, friends, such great hits as Let's Get Away for It All, Trains and Boats and Planes, Born to Run, and the Philippine favorite, Help Me Make It Through the Night and Also Through Customs. <laughs> You'll hear Don't Cry For Me, Honolulu, On the Road Again. You've got a friend, but unfortunately it's not Corey Okino. Hit the road, Jack. And the ever popular, do you know the way to San Jose? I own a couple of condos there. But friends, that's right, friends. But friends, there's more Marcos magic. Ferdinand Jr., yes, Skip Marcos, with his latest video cassette, a chip off the old dictator. Yes. Feature such old favorites as Own Mime Papa, How He Can Stuff a Ballot Box, Under the Boardwalk, Bearing Our Krugerrands, and I Left My Heart in San Francisco, but who cares? My dad owns L.A. and San Diego. <laughs> now, friends, you'll also discover, and there's more, that you call right this moment. We'll add this videotape of some of the talented animals Ferdinand owns. Yes, it's the Marcos Cows Go Country. <laughs> Come on. 
I'm talking a hell of a bargain here. <laughs> the entire Marcos Golden Treasury is yours for the ridiculously low price of $79.95 or a valid entry visa to any country in the world. <laughs> Our operators are standing by right now. Call them and say, I want my Marcos TV. <laughs> You'll be glad you did. That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of the great joys of doing this show over the years is seeing a new comedian or comedian walk out here that nobody knows and automatically be a big smash. But about a year ago, a housewife from Denver decided she wanted to make people laugh. Last year, she made her first television appearance with us, and I think this week or next week, she opens for Julio Iglesias. Would you welcome, tonight actually in California, would you welcome please Roseanne Barr? Well, it's a thrill to be out of the house. <clears throat> I never get out of the house. I never do nothing fun. I never go no place ever, 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 because I'm a housewife. I hate that word, and I hate the word homemaker, too. I want to be called domestic goddess. <laughs> so much more descriptive. And you know what I do all day? Yeah, you're right. I lay there on that couch eating those bonbons, watching those soap operas, and tune into that Donahue show. Because there's a show you can really learn something from. I didn't even know it was possible there'd be a woman trapped in a man's body. <laughs> <laughs> well, you live, you learn, I guess. The other day on Donahue, they had on these men that like to dress up like women, and when they do, they can no longer parallel park. Well, anyways, I don't know. <clears throat> you guys like impressions? Oh, good, I do them. Okay. Oh, I'd like to give you my impression of Miss Barbara Streisand. <clears throat> I think she's very talented and seems like a nice person. <laughs> Well, that's the impression I get. <laughs> well, anyways, while I'm fat, I thought I'd point that out. <laughs> well, fat people, we don't even think like skinny people, though. We got our own way of thinking, you know? Did you ever ask a fat person for directions? Because that is when the difference in thinking really does show. Because you go up to them on the street and ask them where something is, and they tell you like this. Well, <clears throat> go down here to Arby's. <laughs> it's that chocolate brown building down there. <laughs> but I think it's good that I'm fat, though, because I'm a mom, and fat moms are better than skinny moms anyway. You know, because what do you want when you're really depressed? You know, some skinny mom? Well, why don't you jog around a while and that'll release adrenaline in your blood and you'll better cope with stress. <laughs> or some fat mom. Well, let's have pudding, Oreos, and marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, when you wake up from that sugar coma, it'll be a brand new week. <laughs> a mom and everything. My kids really love me because I'm kind of like the mother they never had and everything. <laughs> and I've been married a long time, 14 years, so you know I'm happy. <laughs> well, some stuff bugs me about being married, like having a husband and everything, you know. Because they get on your nerves, you know, and they keep on doing it over and over and over. I think they do it on purpose, you know. Like when they all the time try to talk to you, I hate that. <laughs> you know, he comes in there, Roseanne, don't you think we should talk about our sexual problems? <laughs> like, I'm gonna turn off Wheel of Fortune for that. <laughs> Put it 
on a gift certificate, all right? <laughs> now, here's the other thing they do that really bugs me. Well, they think that you're gonna be the one that cleans everything, huh? Like, they think that's your destiny to clean everything, you know? And I guess their destiny is to have a couch surgically implanted on their behind. <laughs> the man of your dreams, ladies, but 14 years later, you're married to a reclining chair that burps. <laughs> it's always bothering you to clean. I don't even care about none of that cleaning stuff. The day I worry about cleaning up my house is the day Sears comes out with a riding vacuum cleaner. <laughs> like a wet bar on it and that, you know. Because the way I look at it, I figure when my husband comes home at night, if those kids are still alive, hey, I've done my job. <laughs> now, you still love them and all, but that don't help, I don't know. I should say something nice about husbands and everything, because, you know, I think husbands, they're like the best of all the men. They're like the top of the line as far as the men go. Because, well, at least they can make a commitment and deal with real life, you know? Not like these young warriors they got out there these days. Well, Roseanne, I'm not ready to settle down. I am living life on the edge of the fast lane. <laughs> yeah, get a relationship and face the real danger. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see you look a mortgage in the face for 30 years. <laughs> you skydiving wimps. <laughs> But then, I don't know, you try real hard, but they're never happy. I don't know why they're never happy, you know? He comes in there, Roseanne, I need more space. So I locked him outside. <laughs> well, anyway. Now, really, though, me and my husband, well, we really got that mutual respect and all, you know? Like, he never mentions I'm slightly overweight, and I never mention he's got more hair in his ears than he does on his head. <laughs> well, besides, I really like sleeping with a ball-headed guy. I like that, you know. Because at night when you're in bed, well, you always got a place to stick your gum. <laughs> She's funny. That's a funny young lady, and we'll be back in a moment. Introducing the unbelievable American under $7,800, the Plymouth Sundance Series. The pride is back! Plymouth Sundance, the best value of any car in its class, including the imports. 47 standard features to convince you, five-year or 50,000-mile protection plan to assure you. Plymouth Sundance, the unbelievable American under $7,800. The pride is back! Born in America! You'll see. Only nerds eat Kellogg's cornflakes. Tony Danza eats them. He does? Ah! Elton John! Kenny Loggins! Rob Lowe! Eat cornflakes? Ah! It may surprise you who eats cornflakes, but not why. Great taste and solid nutrition. Mm. Make them a real breakfast hit. Oh, wow. David Loomis eats them, too. Who's he? At Hunk in my biology class. Ah! How about this Kellogg's cornflakes? What a drag it is getting old, especially if you're a battery. So Kodak introduces super light alkaline batteries. They last much longer than ordinary batteries. And only super light has a real gold tip to ensure the best contact. Now, do you settle for the ordinary or go for the gold? are all worked up. Oh, girls, I'm just in ecstasy. Saturday nights will be even funnier with Amen. I'm really a great guy. Premiering after the Golden Girls Saturday. This is NBC News Digest. 
Here is Tom Brokaw, NBC News. Good evening. Secretary of State Schultz and Soviet Foreign Minister Shevardnadze met tonight for 90 minutes in New York. The two men left the meeting in separate limousines without comment. A Schultz spokesman said the case of American journalist Nicholas Danilov was discussed, but there was no resolution. Senate Majority Leader Robert Dole told me tonight the Senate will pass the tax reform bill by a good, heavy, affirmative vote. The House passed it today. Some members of Congress today protested Japanese Prime Minister Nakasone's remarks about the effect of minorities on the level of intelligence in the United States. Representative Perrin Mitchell suggested they stop buying Japanese cars. I'm Tom Brokaw in New York. Have you heard the latest? Be the first to know with Entertainment Tonight, weeknights at 7. Today the healthcare industry is changing rapidly, but no one can help you understand these changes better than the people at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Ohio. <laughs> Behind this rugged game of football, there's a lot of sophisticated communications. For the teams, the stadiums, and you. I'm Dick Enberg. You know GTE supplies communications like these for Texas Stadium, the Pro Bowl in Hawaii, Tampa Stadium, and the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. For your quality communications, talk to the telecommunications consultant to Super Bowl XXI. Talk to GTE. Tax reform and what it will mean to you an update report tonight. Okay, we are back. Thank you. I, uh, I live in Malibu, California, and we try to keep undesirables out whose activities drive down property values. Now, David Letterman lives right up the street from me in the neighborhood and created somewhat of a problem, which I thought I had taken care of, as you'll see. Now, I have, I have something I want to show you, because I knew you had this, although I hadn't seen it. Uh, remember the last time you were out, about three or four months ago? All right. David has a home out in Malibu. I won't mention exactly where it is, because we were only about eight blocks apart. And I was out walking one day. Oh, yeah. Can you believe that? He's out, out walking? <laughs> and I passed this house, and I saw this beat-up red pickup truck. That's I right. don't know how old it is, 15 Seven, or 20 no, years 73 old. 73 Chevy, and it's not, it's not what I would call beat up. Well, <laughs> we're, we're going to find out. And I said to David, I, said, I called him, we were talking on the phone, and I said, I thought you had it out in front of the house, because when tourists would come by, <laughs> even though you have very expensive sport cars in your garage, you, you put that out to, so people would come back and say, hey, my God, he's just like us. He drives a pickup truck. <laughs> You know, you leave it there so everybody can see it. It's yeah. intruding on the street. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, being a member of the Malibu uh, yeah. Community Property Owners Association, uh, I went by your house this morning on the way to work. No. No. And I, and I want to I show you. I took this picture myself. No. Right. Now. No, right in front of David's no, house. No, no. Now, if you drive around Malibu, it's a nice neighborhood. A, and I think this potentially, as, as, a, as a homeowner, is, is a bit of an eyesore. No, it's not. It is. <laughs> even though it's, it's nice. And so, today, and I will take full responsibility for this, call me vigilante, if you wish. <laughs> I dispatched some people to your home, because I've mentioned this to you before. Oh, good. About this the is truck. what I need. Strangers roaming around in my front yard. So, would you roll the tape that we made this afternoon since you have come? This is a view of the truck. Oh, we no, took this no, I want no. you to see this fine automobile close up. Oh. Take a look at the appointments now, inside the, the cab. It was locked. Now How look at this. this. Look at the seat. <laughs> this is David's truck. Yeah. Look, yeah. At, look at this. Fine automobile. <laughs> Parked out in front of expensive homes in Malibu. <laughs> Rust spots, this thing is disintegrating. So I said, I said to the people in Malibu, do you really want this around? Yeah. So here, here's what we did, and I take full responsibility. No. Oh. oh, good, good. Steal it, sure. Uh, what, uh, what, did you get some of Gaddafi's boys to go out there? <laughs> Stealing a truck! Now we, no. we had a neighborhood watch. We had to move very quickly. Oh God! So what's next? Kidnapping I, my girlfriend? I thought That'd this was. Good. Uh, no. And there you go. I tried. I 
figured now, as, as a private, I figured as a citizen, I did have a right to improve the community. So, David, <laughs> like a citizen's arrest here. David, this no, 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 is no, your no, truck. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, that episode did not end there. Uh, later on, uh, David uh, said that we'd broken a headlight, and this actually came down to arbitration, and Judge Wapner came on the show later, which we will show you that he handed down his decision. Uh, right now, is, it, is, is this the Tim spot? Yes. Uh, Tim Conway is a marvelously inventive comedian. He, he is, he's funny. He was born funny. And one night, uh, we did an interview. Tim was playing a jockey. Here's Tim Conway at his silliest. It's a great pleasure to, uh, to have you with us tonight. Oh, thank you very much. That's, uh, <laughs> it's a real pleasure for me to be here, too. I wish I could express that like you do, but it's your show. I'm sure yes. that you could do that a lot better than I do. Uh -huh. um, now, Lyle, I... Lyle, I don't mean, I don't mean to be critical, mm. but aren't you a little uh, heavy for a jockey? How, how much do you weigh? Uh, I go about 145 well, pounds. Yeah, that is. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I won't be able to stay here and talk too long. I have to get right back to the sweat box there, yes. Mm -hmm. I see. We're talking major perspiration here. I suppose here. so, yes. yes, yes. Uh, now, how, how do you weigh in with all, with, with all that weight? Well, I step on the scale very lightly, just to put the, maybe one foot on at a time. You know, you can't get down there full force. That's uh -huh. the thing that goes zingo on me. You I know. see. <laughs> now, Lyle, you have a, a rather unusual writing style. Could you explain it? And that I do. I do. <laughs> you know, one of the guys, when they get in that gate like that, uh -huh. and as soon as those horses take off, they take them right to the inside. <laughs> I don't do that. You don't do no, that? No. See, I take my horse to the outside like this. <laughs> Well, why, why do you do that? Well, it's a lot longer that way, but it's sure a lot safer. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> now, speaking of safety, that's a big factor. Do you take any, any precautions for a safer ride? That I do, yes, uh -huh. sir. Uh, see, I was falling off an awful lot, so what I do now is tie myself to the horse. I imagine to keep this weight under control, you have to exercise uh, quite a bit. I do, I do. Could you yes. show us what your day consists of to keep in shape? Well, sure. Well, the first thing I do when I get out of bed in the morning uh -huh. is, of course, I jump right out of bed like that. <laughs> Once I hit that the floor, I try to warm up with touching my toes. That's the Touch. most important thing. Touching the toes. <laughs> and then once I get warmed up, I give it the old like. <laughs> I try to get right into the setup. Sit up. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's very important. Give it this. Thing. And then I just... Well, I want to thank you for joining us, Lyle Dorb. It's been a great pleasure. Lyle Dorb. <laughs> That's a brilliant piece. Oh, funny man. Okay. You all know Joe Piscopo from his work on Saturday Night Live. This, the first time I met Joe was when he was a guest on the show, and I got the impression that Joe wasn't feeling too well. <laughs> uh, this is the first time, actually, we have ever met, although it's, we work for the same network. It, it's such a thrill meeting you, I gotta tell you. Oh, come on I'm, now. No, honestly, such a big fan. All my life I've been watching, you know, and I've been seeing you joke about uh, the commissary, so I went and had lunch at the commissary today. And? I ordered the chicken. Uh -huh. It was good. It, it, it wasn't as well done as I would have liked. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> well, well, okay. Bette Midler uh, has been on the show a number of times, uh, years ago when she was hardly known at all. She's, she's a gigantic talent. And what I like about Bette is she doesn't take herself too important. She, she puts, pokes fun at herself. And she was talking one night about trying to lo lose a few pounds, and this is the way she aired her gripes about it. Could I sing you 
a song about my, uh, my, uh, my weight problem? Yeah. Would you like that? I would. Good. Right I, here. uh... <laughs> I've never sung from this position before. <laughs> I've sung from others, but never, never <laughs> sitting up. I'm not going to be a fool and ask, either. Good. This is a, this is a song uh, uh, two friends of mine and I wrote for this album called Mud Will Be Flung Tonight, in which I slander just about everyone, everyone in the business. Hey. Um, uh, this, this song is called Fat As I Am, because I've been moaning and, and you know, uh, fetching about my, uh, my weight for so long. I decided I would just put pen to paper and, and maestro, if you don't mind, give me a little intro. Thank you. Fat as I am, who wants to see a diva fat as I am? I get mistaken now for Lainey Kazan. How is it that I'm fat as I am? Fat as I am, the camera's gonna add a ton to my can. This is the way they say Godzilla began. I can't believe I'm fat as I am. <laughs> Try it again. All my friends say I should die it again. That my fans are gonna ride again. Look what happened to Liz. <laughs> Shall I go on? My sins are not as numerous as all of my chins. I could audition for the double mint twins. No one in the biz is as fat as I is. Oh, but what's a career when you put it next to not worse than beer? They could park a DC 10 on my rear. God knows I got the gas. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be back in a second. In a second. The following. Wonderful. We'll be back in a second. Read about me, you deep party. Rewinding. What happened to the PSA? Well, we don't know. It's a public service announcement. Hi, this is Johnny Carson. Do you spend a lot of lonely nights lurking outside bedroom windows? With nobody to share what you saw that time the attractive divorcee brought home the Amco transmission mechanic? <laughs> Are you single and a sex deviant? Now there's an organization for people just like you. Make an obscene phone call today to perverts without partners. 555-3438. Five, 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 three, three, there's a buddy in the bushes who'd like to hear from you. This portion brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Eight long years of development have created the Mercedes-Benz 300E. It moves from zero to 55 in a stunning 7.5 seconds. It moves performance sedan engineering into a new dimension. And it returns to zero with computerized ABS anti-lock brakes. The 300E sedan. You Americans have all the luck. When I want the great chicken dishes of the world, I have to use my British passport. Your passport, however, is Tyson Chicken Entrees. Delicious international meals like Tyson Chicken Francais. Incredibly sumptuous. And fortunately, Tyson prepares chicken in so many delicious ways. Tyson is the only passport you need for a world of great tastes. Wait up! Go, <laughs> <No>, honey. <laughs> Recent medical evidence has shown that your family's risk of heart disease can be reduced by lowering their serum cholesterol levels. <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you. One way to do that is by eating foods low in saturated fat and cholesterol. Gee, hope that's not full of saturated fat. <laughs> of course not. It's new promise. See? 
Made with sunflower oil, no cholesterol, low in saturated fat. Mm. So get heart smart. Choose foods like Promise. Like New Promise Spread. Get heart smart. Try New Promise in your dietary plan. The leader in long distance service now costs less. AT&T has lowered weekday and evening prices 13.8%, the largest single reduction in our history, but not the first. Since 1984, our prices overall have dropped more than 20%. Of course, you can always look to AT&T for the highest quality service, and now, see where our prices have gone. AT&T, the right choice. Is this the end of the A-Team? This is heavy stuff. Or an incredible new beginning. Fridays. I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Doc. We are back. There is... When Robin Williams is hot, there, or on a roll, as we say, mm. there is nobody who is more of a genius than he is. Uh, he just comes on and this wonderful stream of consciousness takes over. I, I think Robin lives in a spandex condo sometimes, but <laughs> here's Robin Williams on the loose. We got, uh, we got a group on here. You, you, do, you, li you like mime. You're good. Yes, you, you I was a mime in front of the Metropolitan Museum in New York. That's right. That was fun, too. It's a lot of fun, too, when you, uh, you're doing mime, imitating people, and some very elegant lady in a fur goes, get the hell away from me before I tear your head off. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, madam. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, what did you do? What's wrong? Are you sick? Why are you so white? You're too white. <laughs> You're too white. You always expect when you see a mime to see someone going, here's your win, Mr. Marceau. It's backstage. <laughs> Somebody walks up. You're not in a the box. There's no box. Come on, get out of the box. <laughs> it's a tendency. It's a... Did you make any money at that? Did people actually stop and throw some... No, yeah, they did. Quarters, no, maybe. It's becoming more all the time. You go to Central Park now, you see guys with drums. I mean, every corner, there's something. somebody working. Yeah, yeah, I saw Richard Nixon singing. Which <laughs> Was he... <laughs> I'm a rapping kind of guy. Can you see me now? Here we go. I'll play the tapes if you know. Come on. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's Ron's birthday today, though, isn't it? That's Ron's birthday today. Uncle Ron, happy birthday. Well, every time I look at him, I think that Disney's last wish was make a president. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, sometimes you think the way he moves. You know, I was one. Mm -hmm. As we look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I feel the... <laughs> then there's Henry Kissinger going, move his arms, move his arms. <laughs> I hope that one day they go back to Geneva and he and Gorbachev get together, have a couple of fists of vodka, and there's old Misha going, listen. Okay, listen. No, look me in the eyes, you old cowboy, look here. <laughs> Not the map of Albania, right in the eyes. Listen, listen, we'll lose the missiles, okay? We'll lose the missiles if you lose this Luke Skywalker stuff, okay? <laughs> What are you, Obi-Wan Kenobi? Come on. <laughs> Come on, all I want is maybe a little bit of Western Europe and nude 3D picture of Brooke Shields, okay? <laughs> I would like it because the eyebrows remind me of Brezhnev. Come on. <laughs> are you crazy? Come on. What do you think? Well, mm... <laughs> He's a Muppet. I'm talking to a Muppet. Oh, Robin Williams. Okay. You're probably aware in the entertainment business there is an expression called knockoff, and that's where a lot of um, movies or records are, are copycatted. And, you know, they've ripped off designer jeans, uh, Rolex watches. We found, for example, there was a bootleg videotape of The Tonight Show that some outfit was selling for 1995, and we found that tape. And if you look very carefully, you may notice it's not an official Tonight Show tape. and the NBC Orchestra inviting to join you and Johnny and his guests. <laughs> now, he is here, Johnny! Sure, you love me now, but I saw you earlier slipping your phone number to another talk show host. <laughs> oh. 
you sound like a good group. You make up for last night's crowd. They were not very bright. I looked out, and they were swinging from a tire hanging from the applause sign. <laughs> What are you doing, Edward? Oh, fine, Johnny. How's the new baby? Oh, very good. Edward's baby just learned how to crawl by watching Edward come into the house last night. <laughs> hey, do you believe this weather here in Burbank, huh? It was being very hot. Oh, how being hot, hot was it? it? Robin rubbing, rolling right guard on his worm. Ah. <laughs> Hi, Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Newsom. Thomas has been a good musician, but is not being the most exciting personality. When Thomas orders clams on the half shell, it's called family reunion. <laughs> for my annual physical from the National Broadcasting Company doctor. He says I am in as good a shape as another National Broadcasting Company star, Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> you seem like a good audience. We got a great show for you tonight. <laughs> okay. Obviously not the original. That's a knockoff. Not the original. Obviously a knockoff. Comedian Jerry Seinfeld is with us live tonight. This marks Jerry's 16th appearance since he started here in 1981, and he's turned into one of the most popular club headliners around. Would you welcome, please, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry. Hello, Jerry. Huh? This has got to be show business. What else could we be doing here? Look at these outfits. Well, we're happy to be here. I'm here, you're here. The most important thing about tonight is not just that you have been out, but folks, your clothes are also out. And let me tell you something, in the life of clothes, it's a lot of waiting. In the closet, in the hamper, in the drawer, there's shirts in your house right now going, he never picks me. <laughs> Laundry day is their only exciting day because the washing machine is really the nightclub of clothes. <laughs> It's dark, bubbles happening, they're all kind of dancing around in there. <laughs> Shirt grabs the underwear, come on, babe. <laughs> you come by, you open up the lid, and they all go. <laughs> we were just soaking, could you close that, please? Sometimes I take the clothes out, they're all twisted together. I don't even want to know what happened. <laughs> Let's face it, the most amazing article of clothing is your socks, the drive, the guts, the ambition. How many times you do a big laundry, you go to the dryer, take out your socks, count them up. One of them got out. <laughs> he escaped, took off on his own. What are his chances out there? How many times do you walk down the street and see a dirty sock just lying there in the street? <laughs> he only made it a couple of blocks. <laughs> but he took that risk. They hate their lives that much. They wait for the dryer. The dryer is, of course, his only chance to escape. The dryer door swings open. The sock is always waiting up against the side wall. <laughs> he hopes you don't see him, then he runs. Or he grabs onto your sweater, gives him a little head start. <laughs> That's how they get away. So, um, out here with my mom, we're watching a lot of TV. A lot, a lot of TV. Too much TV. You know, because you don't even watch shows anymore. Isn't that the bad thing about TV? Remember, you used to watch a show. Now you just, well, let's see what's on. Turn it on. Let's see what's on. Flip around. That's how you end up watching things like That's Incredible, which to me should have been called Stop Doing That. <laughs> just cut it out. Take your head out of the vice. They had the guy, do you remember the guy on there that caught the bullet in his teeth? Remember that guy? That was an amazing guy. They would shoot, this is a real guy. They would shoot a gun at him and he would catch the bullet in his teeth. Now, my first question, how do you learn to do this? I mean, do they toss it to you a couple of times first there? Get the feel of it, warm up a little backstage. 
Put it in the gun. Okay, Bill, this one's gonna be coming a little bit faster now. And I'll tell you the worst thing. I'll tell you the worst thing. I don't even remember the guy's name. I don't. He caught a bullet in his teeth and the name slips my mind. I think that's horrible. I mean, if he knew that, wouldn't he feel like, what the hell do I have to do to really impress people? <laughs> Catch a cannonball in the eye? <laughs> I know if you're a burglar, this is a house you don't want to break into. You don't want to surprise this guy in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know, you shoot him in the bedroom, he comes walking out. <laughs> think you got the wrong house, pal. <laughs> Out of 22. I hate those. <laughs> well, it just makes you wonder, doesn't it? There's a lot of amazing people in the world. I'm sure you've all seen the Guinness Book of World's Records. A lot of impressive records in the Guinness Book. A lot of records nobody wants. <laughs> Fattest man in the world. I don't think there's anybody pounding down Twinkies going, I'm sick of coming in second. <laughs> this year, fattest. I'm sure if you've seen the, the guy's picture, it's an amazing picture of the guy. Bob Hughes, this is the guy, the fattest man in the world, 1,400 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the man has let himself go, don't you think? <laughs> Come on, Bob, grab a salad, do something. <laughs> Can't this guy get the small cone once in a while? <laughs> Does he have to get that banana boat barge every time? <laughs> Skip the sprinkles, Bob, you're the fattest man in the world. <laughs> you know, I used to not even want to talk about this guy because I didn't want to, you know, offend somebody in the audience that has a weight problem. And then I got to think, what kind of weight problem? You could weigh a thousand. It wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> you realize? You could weigh a thousand and still go, he's not talking about me. <laughs> this is a guy with a serious weight problem. I'm a thousand, I watch what I eat. But I hope uh, Bob Hughes gets it together, goes on a diet, drops a couple hundred pounds. I don't know. Does 200 pounds even make a dent on this guy? I mean, you're a friend of his. What, what are you going to say to him? Hey, you look great, Bob. What are you down to? 1,200 now? You are a rail, baby. And what's he going to say in response? And you know, I feel terrific. You know, I'm so much more active at 1,200. <laughs> I can blink. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good. When we come back, you're going to see seven singers on our show in a composite, all doing the song of the year. And then after that, David Letterman will join me with Judge Wapner of People's Court to try to resolve our dispute. And we'll be back. The following is a public service announcement. Hello, this is Johnny Carson. Recently, 7-Eleven pulled all copies of Playboy and Penthouse off its magazine racks. Well. I say the 7-Eleven people have not gone far enough. They still sell cigars with the paper wrapper of Cleopatra. <laughs> Their refrigerated case contains frozen pizza boxes, openly displaying the luscious full-figured form of Mama Celeste. <laughs> and to tempt innocent young ladies, their popcorn boxes are adorned with the bedroom-eyed, wavy-haired countenance of Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> and they sell a drink obscenely titled Slurpee. <laughs> Remove these items, Mr. Convenience Store Owner. Until you do, remember, shoppers, you can't get to heaven if you go to 7-Eleven. <laughs> when you're behind the wheel in the Baron GTS, it's nice to know GTS excelled in handling in a U.S. Auto Club test. Did 0 to 50 in 5.63 seconds. Triumphed in braking and gave BMW and Mercedes something they never expected, a driving lesson. GTS comes sensibly priced with Chrysler's protection plan. You don't drive LeBaron GTS the way USAC did, but it's nice to know you could. 
Chrysler, driving to be the best. There are two things here that are soft but work hard. Me and Carpet Fresh Soft Scent. It's the rug and room deodorizer that eliminates the toughest odors but leaves a clean, soft scent. Me and Carpet Fresh Soft Scent. We work hard, but we can be soft, too. Sales anniversary sale. Our offer? Store-wide savings of 20 to 50% off original prices. It's our best anniversary sale ever. Sales anniversary sale. Your deadline. Sale ends this Sunday. Sunday. A woman torn between her fantasies and her troubled marriage. Donna Mills. James Brolin. Intimate Encounters Sunday. This is a 13 News Track. Brought to you by First Federal Savings and Loan of Toledo. Good evening, I'm Jerry Anderson. Tonight we're updating these stories. Things have returned to normal tonight following a chemical accident today at a North Baltimore plastics plant. But the plant has a history of problems, as we'll show you in a Brad Ritter update report. We'll also tell you what the tax reform bill passed today will mean to you. And we'll show you the extraordinary talents of blind, retarded pianist Leslie Lemke. Now this. First Federal has set aside $50 million for owner-occupied one to four family units with rates as low as 9.5%. First Federal Savings of Toledo. Stay with us tonight. From the moment they met... Today I saw Eric. Hi. They were sharing the secret. I fell 50 feet, had a mark on me. Somebody caught me. Believing in a miracle. Sometimes we need to believe in a little magic. Living the adventure. And critics across the country have discovered this very special motion picture. The Boy Who Could Fly. Wow. Rated PG. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Check newspapers. When Linda Fernie was growing up, she heard how her grandma lost 24 years of job security when Autolite suddenly closed. So school board member Linda Fernie fought for programs to better prepare students to work in the future. And city council member Linda Fernie sponsored legislation to keep employment strong in Toledo. She's fought tirelessly for other issues that matter. Parks, senior programs, safe streets, and clean water. Now Linda Fernie wants to continue the job as our state senator. Linda Fernie, Democrat for state senate. She'll be there for Toledo. Sports with Michael Regan this weekend on 13 News. Okay, a few years ago... A few years ago, every singer that came on The Tonight Show did New York, New York. For the past year, the big song has been Memories from Cats. So what we've done, we have kind of put a little montage together featuring Ben Vereen, Andy Williams, Betty Buckley, Jack Jones, Barry Manilow, Tom Jones, and Sammy Davis, singing Memories. Midnight, not a sound from the pavement Has the moon lost her memory? She is smiling alone
from Cash. Good stuff. Okay. That takes care of memory for the year. Okay. Early in the program, I showed you a film clip of my, I say borrowing, David Letterman's truck. David says I stole it. Later, he claimed uh, the headlight was broken. Uh, so we both agreed there's only one way to settle it, and that was by arbitration. So we invited Judge Wapner of People's Court to come on the show and arbitrate this, this tough case. Gentlemen, since this is uh, an arbitration, I'm going to have to ask you to be sworn, if you don't mind. No, 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 no. You and each of you do solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give in these proceedings shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you guide. More or less, sir. Yes. <laughs> yes sir. There better be more. Yes, yes, sir. All yes, right. Sir. Do, I, do I begin, Judge? You, what happens, sir? You wait for me, Mr. Lowe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Letterman, my understanding is that you have some complaint about a truck that was, uh, you allege Mr. Carson took from you. What kind of truck is it? Uh, Your Honor, tonight you're going to hear a story. No, uh, I don't want to hear the story. What kind of truck is it? Uh, it's a uh, fleet side, uh, half-ton 1973 Chevrolet pickup truck, roughly 75,000 miles on it. All right, good. Where, where was it parked when you allege it was taken? Uh, right in front of my home, where it's always parked. On the, that's on the street? On the street, yes, sir. It's legally parked there? Absolutely. Okay, just ask the question. <laughs> Now, you claim that Mr. Carson or someone on his behalf took it. Absolutely. I've, I have proof to that effect. Mr. Carson, did you have that truck taken away and brought to the studio? Yes, sir. I did remove the truck from the premises. All right. Why An did... illegally parked truck on county no, property. I object, Your Honor. I object. Why was it? Why I was object. it? Why did, well, don't object. It's not going to help you any. <laughs> Was it illegally parked, sir? Oh, may I offer an evidence, uh, Your Honor? Yes, a, sir. a picture here? Yes. May I please uh, show this to you and then uh, show it to our viewing audience. You can see the truck parked partly on the street and on county property, not on the setback. All right. On the setback? What the hell's a setback? <laughs> Let me ask you something, Mr. Letterman. Yes, sir. Yes, you yes, claim Your that Honor. this the truck was damaged, the headlight was damaged? Absolutely. Or something? Uh, I have did you have it repaired? It. Uh, I have estimates to have it repaired. I have three estimates to have it repaired. May I see them? See the estimates? Yes, sir. All right. Let me get them from my massive briefs here. <laughs> Would you sir. be good enough to pass those? <laughs> Oh, I also have an affidavit, a sworn uh, statement of a gentleman who uh, looks after my home that the truck, in fact, was damaged upon its return. Uh, uh, notarized. It was notarized. Good, 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 good. Well, the, uh, you've, given, was... you've given me two estimates, sir. Yeah, I know. My dog ate the other one. <laughs> All right. You, you may I interject, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Uh, as you can see, that the headlight was not damaged when the truck was on stage. The truck was returned to Mr. Letterman's home, where it sat on the street, unguarded. Well, which who drove who drove the truck back? Uh, our staff returned the truck to Mr. Letterman's house. Uh, do you have days. an affidavit from anyone from the staff that when it, you brought it back, it was not damaged at all, sir? Oh yes. Do you have it with you? Well, I'll get it for you. <laughs> my, my staff will give me whatever I want. Sir. <laughs> Anyway, the judge, <laughs> if you want to know, we don't have Doug Llewellyn here, but let me give you what happened. Uh, judge Wapner found in favor of David Letterman, yeah. and it cost me $24.95, <laughs> which, of course, does away with any future appearances of Judge Wapner on this show. <laughs> we'll be right back. The following is a public service announcement. Hi, this is Johnny Carson reminding you that the days when it was a good idea to donate your body to medical science are long past. Nowadays, every medical school in the country is filled to the rafters with more cadavers than it can possibly use. <laughs> but you can still donate your body to a worthy cause, to your local fast food restaurant, <laughs> where it will be used as a speed bump in their parking lot. 
In this way, you'll be remembered by your loved ones every time they come in for some burgers, drive through too fast over you, and wreck their front wheel alignment. For a donor card you can keep with you at all times in your wallet, send today to Jack in the Asphalt, <laughs> Studio City, California. The feel of silk against skin. The scent of night blooming flowers. The sound of the wind. From the Orient, we have learned to indulge the senses. The menu introduces Lorient. Elegant dishes like delicate lemon chicken or succulent beef with broccoli and richly spiced lo mein, all with tea and chopsticks. Lorient, new from the menu. I like your thinking. It's a solution we've been searching for. Well, we've included networking, multi-user systems, as well as PC-compatible workstations and software. And I like your installation. Support, training, service. Radio Shack computer centers have it all. I know we can do business. Tandy Computers, only at Radio Shack. In business, for business. You know what really chips me off? When even your fat clothes are too tight. When they tell you you can wear the bridesmaid's dress again. And I'm not a cranky person. Except when my nails get chipped and I really get chipped off. So I use L'Oreal 10-day formula. With a little care, I can go 10 days with hardly a chip. So why do I get chipped off? That's when I can't find L'Oreal. 10-day formula nail enamel from L'Oreal. Miami Vice takes you to a whole new level of... Obsession. The new action... Military madness. ...begins tomorrow. It's coming. Then on Crime Story, things were looking up. I'm gonna be a father. But Lucas Vendetta could destroy Torello. It goes down now! Miami Vice and Crime Story, tomorrow. The movie Adam made history, but what happened next is even more incredible. I can't lose another son. Adam, his song continues Monday. For a long time, I've held the belief that there is only one fruitcake in the world. I'm not a fruitcake fan. I think that people pass it from family to family at Christmas, and there's only one around. They're, they're just too heavy, uh, as, as you will see uh, from the following. Would you bring in the fruitcake, please? And you'll see what I mean. This is the only way you can get around with a fruitcake. <laughs> Unless you think I'm... <coughs> is that beautiful? Uh, of course. Okay. What? That is a fruitcake. It looks heavy. What? It looks heavy. Just a little bit. <laughs> so much for the fruitcake. Okay. We had a... We had a woman who wrote to me asking to be on the show who called herself the International Queen of the Polka. Her name was Vlasta Krsik. And she said she'd written a, a polka for Pope John Paul II and President Reagan, and she always wanted to meet me. She sent this picture of herself. Uh, uh, do I have the picture? Oh, here it is. And this is the reason, folks. I said, that's my kind of guest. <laughs> so here is our interview with Vlasta Krsik. You do have a husband, though, right? Yes, and I got married when I was 16. 16? Yes. Does, is he, does he listen to you practice? Oh, Johnny, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> see what happens? I come up with these tunes, and probably Mr. Doc Sorensen knows how this works. You, can't, you get an idea, and it doesn't matter if it's afternoon or night. Sometimes I wake up at night at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I come up with a tune, so I pick up a accordion, I wake my husband up, I says, Johnny. At two o'clock, you wake, wake your husband up. and play the accordion? <laughs> Is that true? Doc. Uh, Doc, you, you told me I can call you Doc? Yeah, please. See, He's Mr. not a medical Summer doctor. Did he tell you he was a... <laughs> did, he try, did he try that routine about being a medical doctor? 
No. We've had some problems here in the studio. So, so he must understand, too. You know, tunes come to you. That doesn't mean, you know, 6 o'clock evening, are you going to write? No, it comes at night. So I wake up my husband. I says, honey, can you listen to this tune? So he gets up, and he's <laughs> listening to the tune. Sometimes he comes from work. And you know, you guys are terrible. You, you either come from work, you read the news, uh, watch the football game or baseball game, nobody can talk to you. So I wait when my husband takes a bath, and then I'll, then I'll take my accordion, sit on the toilet, see John. <laughs> Any marriage that can survive a husband taking a bath and a wife sitting on the toilet seat with an accordion <laughs> is a strong union. All right, here's a short clip. Everybody likes to feel like you're a sex symbol. Mm -hmm. One time I dated Diane Cannon shortly and she married somebody else and I asked her how she happened to marry this guy so quickly. Uh, here's her reaction. Can I ask you something without getting too intimate? How do you know after, uh, I mean, we'd gone out a couple of times, right? <laughs> Why is she laughing? Wait a minute. Why is she laughing? See, there's the difference right there. And I didn't see you running to the phone to call mom and dad. After we went out a couple oh, times, what John. was there about this fella? Uh, that, that was different than you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sybil Shepherd had the decency to come on one night and quote some comments she'd made about uh, me in a magazine. Here's Sybil. Can I read this? Sure. I always wanted to know him. I've been on his show, but I never really got the chance to talk to him. It's not that I see him as a sexual turn-on. <laughs> no, did I say that? I didn't mean that. It's what it says. It's not that I see him as a sexual turn-on. It's just I think he's a real intelligent man, and he's fun. I'd like to have dinner with him sometime. Yes. But sexually, I mean, you wouldn't... Uh... <laughs> find that uh, that comes later, like, after friendship, more than it's Or like... maybe after dinner. Yes. <laughs> yeah, friendship right. first, right? Well, Why you said not? you'd like to have dinner. Yes. I've ordered dinner for us. Oh. Well, is our waiter here? <laughs> no, I read this, and I said, let's... Wait Where's our waiter? Good evening. I'm your waiter, Jack. Oh, you're our waiter, Jack. Fine. All right. Waiter, Jack. But okay, thank you. There's a plate right there. Sure. It's just awfully Where's there comfy? Fine. Thank you very much. I, <laughs> seems like we should be closer together. There'll be a big tip for you at the end. Oh, candles over here. All right. Fine. Here you are. There's a candle for you. Oh, thank you. Figured, why not? You don't mind if we just... No. No, it's not as intimate. Actually. <laughs> where, did, where did we get this food, by the way? Was this come commissary. Casa Commissary. From the commissary? <laughs> Maybe not. Not often you see meat with a warning from the Surgeon General on it. <laughs> it looks like chicken fried steak. I don't know if it uh -huh. is. Aha. And. Oh. oh, well, that I can, that My I can use. Favorite this. wine. Blue Rabbi. See, now that's what would happen if we went to dinner. I would do some stupid thing like that at the table. You should have spilled it in your lap, and then I could have cleaned it up. Uh, it's those little... It's, uh, it's those little fantasies that keep you going yes. through life. <laughs> well, they put me away quickly. Oh, right. <laughs> All right, when we come back, we'll have our little closing, and... Uh, a little message for you. The following is a public service announcement. 
Hi, this is Johnny Carson making a plea directly to you women in Beverly Hills. Do you realize that there are women in the rural community of our country less fortunate than you? Ladies who live hundreds of miles from a plastic surgeon? Yes, I'm talking about flat-chested farm wives. Won't you help out? Send your extra silicone to Boobs for Rubes, Twiggy, Kansas, 80725. The Mercedes-Benz Driving Simulator, a laboratory that moves. Computerized hydraulics producing realistic driving forces. Computerized projectors creating a lifelike driving world. Allowing engineers to analyze the responses of ordinary drivers in extraordinary moments. Duplicating any driving situation in total safety. Mercedes-Benz continues to learn the secrets of automotive science. And the automotive world continues to learn from Mercedes-Benz. Raul, where's the package? I have no idea. And the Air Express Company has no idea either. Hold it. If you'd used Federal Express, you wouldn't be having this problem. Come with me. Federal tracks your package with scanners from where it's picked up uh -huh. to where it's delivered. Uh -huh. Giving you its exact status within 30 minutes for your money back. Uh -huh. Next time, send it Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? I had no idea Federal did that. Absolutely no idea. Saturday, it's the season premiere of Hunter. Think of me as a challenge. I'm charging you with attempted murder. Is it a love triangle or a setup? That's why you got a partner. Hunter. Sunday, Easy Street moves to its regular time with a big celebration. That dude is a party reptile. Brush up your social skills. No. For Easy Street. Then let's all raise a toast. Ah! I have raised a fool. To the season premiere of Valerie. And I'm not even dressed yet. Sunday. All right, before we say goodnight, I hope you've, uh, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. There are a lot of people behind the scenes that, whose names you'll see at the end of this show. I, I guess most of our thanks are due to you people watching who have put up with our nonsense for 24 years. We thank you very, very much. You make this a lot of fun to do, and uh, we'll be here for a while longer. Um, now, the night that uh, Vlasa was on the show, the lady you just saw, she composed a special polka. So we thought we would just close the show with that and the credits. Come on, folks, and hear me out to what I have to say. It's all about your host, Johnny Carson is his name. He's on each evening entertaining you. Yes, on tonight's show, he made it for God. It's lots of fun, you see. Johnny, oh Johnny, it's just one to three. You'll feel great all over. If you do the polka with me. is a woman whose fantasies become a reality and threaten to destroy her marriage. I'm scared. Intimate Encounters, Sunday. Since Johnny's in prime time, late night's taking over with Patti LaBelle and Tony Randall. Say, Dave, as long as you're up and Raquel's there, why don't you do two shows in a row? Coming up next on 13 News Update, tax reform rolls through the House. Tonight we'll tell you what it means and have comments from Marcy Captor. And the Bud Company cleans up tonight from a chemical spill, but we'll have a report that says Bud 